Well, hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking all about using minoxidil, otherwise known as Rogaine, for growing fuller eyebrows and a thicker beard. Rogaine is an over-the-counter medication used to treat hair loss. It's a hair loss medication. You're probably aware of it, but I get questions here all the time. Hey, can we use this to get fuller eyebrows or a thicker beard? So in this video, we're gonna be talking all about using minoxidil for the brows and the beard. But before getting into it, I wanna take a moment to thank today's video sponsor, Function of Beauty. Function of Beauty is fully customizable hair care products that you can get delivered right to your door so it's super convenient. I've been using Function of Beauty since October of 2019. I really like them because from time to time your hair care needs change, you wanna change things up, and you can do that easily and get a formulation that suits your individual hair type and hair needs. It's really easy, you just go in and take a quick quiz outlining your hair type and your hair goals. You can choose up to five, but lately I've been just getting shine and I love it. It always leaves my hair very glossy. And then you go in and you choose whether or not you want color added to the shampoo. I always get dye free. You also can choose the fragrance and of course, you know me, I get fragrance free. And you can have your name put on the bottle. Every order comes with stickers that you can use to decorate the bottles. Then at checkout, you can choose how often you want it delivered. Function of Beauty heavily vets their formulations and ingredients. They're rigorously tested on actual human volunteers for safety and efficacy. There's no animal testing. Function of Beauty is 100% vegan and cruelty free. Right now, Function of Beauty has a really great offer going on. You can get 20% off your first 16 ounce set when you click the link in my description box and subscribe. And you get free shipping when you subscribe. So definitely check it out. Thank you, Function of Beauty, for sponsoring today's video. A little bit about minoxidil, if you're not familiar with it. The way it works, truthfully, we don't actually really know how it works, but it's thought to work by acting on potassium channels on the little smooth muscles and the blood vessels that course around your hair follicle, helping to bring in nutrients. It basically promotes more of the hairs to go into that growing phase. And if you've ever used it, you know that in the beginning, you experience a lot of shedding. That's to be expected. So that's when you use it on your scalp. But what about using it elsewhere on the body, like your eyebrows? Well, there is evidence to support the use of minoxidil for eyebrow hypotrichosis, which is the medical term for sparse eyebrows. Eyebrow hypotrichosis can be primary, meaning it's just part of who you are to have sparse eyebrows, or it can be secondary to an underlying medical condition like hypothyroidism. It can be secondary to a chronic skin condition like eczema, but in a lot of cases, it's really just your makeup to have sparser eyebrows. So patients using 2% minoxidil lotion twice daily for 16 weeks did in fact demonstrate an improvement in brow density and brow diameter. And then the study also did like a photographic assessment. It was blinded, of course, and demonstrated an improvement in brows compared to placebo. And that improvement was noted as early as eight weeks and then again at the 16 week time point. Another study looked at a 1% minoxidil solution applied to the brows twice daily and likewise showed similar results of an improvement in brow density, brow diameter, and overall global photographic assessment. And then lastly, there's a study looking at a 3% minoxidil solution applied twice daily. And in this study, they compared it to bimatoprost, otherwise known as Latisse. If you have no idea what that is, I do have a video on it. It is a prescription eyelash serum for lash growth, but it also can be applied to the brows for eyebrow hypotrichosis. And in the study, 3% minoxidil solution was as effective as bimatoprost. However, there were more side effects with minoxidil, namely contact dermatitis irritation. If you've ever used minoxidil on your scalp, you know it can be very irritating. The lower percentages of minoxidil are tend to be less irritating, but there can be inactive ingredients in the formula that are irritating, like uh, propylene glycol or alcohol, so that can be drying. So that's for brows, but what about the beard? It's really in vogue to have a full beard. There's one small randomized double masked placebo-controlled trial of using minoxidil, and it did in fact show improvement in beard thickness and density. In this study, they applied half a mil of 3% minoxidil twice a day to the beard area. And in comparison to placebo, there was an increase in the number of hairs, and they also did a global photographic assessment as well. The studies do demonstrate that minoxidil can in fact work 
for sparse brows and for improving beard fullness. But does that mean you should do it? Mm, you wanna proceed cautiously. If you've ever used minoxidil, you know it can be very irritating. And on the face, that is probably more likely. Of course, lower percentages are less likely to be irritating. You know, it's definitely something you have to factor in. Last thing you want is to develop a lot of irritation because that can in fact end up making hair loss much worse. And it can flare things like acne. If you have eczema or very sensitive skin, this just may not be for you. So if you're going to pursue this, I definitely would recommend a small patch test somewhere on the face where you don't mind facial hair growth uh, to, to see if you can tolerate it, okay? And, and do it twice a day for a few weeks. In general though, I'm not so keen on minoxidil for uh, the face, for brow growth, or for beard growth, for just otherwise healthy people who have physiologically sparse brows or a sparse beard. Because what's gonna happen with minoxidil, same thing with using it on the scalp, is initially you're gonna get an increase in shedding. And when we're talking about like the brows, that actually can be pretty drastic. You're committing to it. You're committing to twice a day of this, and it doesn't cure your sparse brows. And what happens if you've ever used minoxidil on your scalp, the same thing that happens there is gonna happen on your face. And that is, in the beginning, you're gonna experience more shedding because minoxidil kind of shifts the hair follicles around to put more in the growing phase. So initially, you do develop a lot of shedding. Now, after that shedding phase, you will start to see some growth. But as soon as you stop minoxidil, then you're going to shed those hairs that were put into the growing phase and you'll be right back to where you started. You may be okay with that, but it's a lot to keep up with for what's likely to be a very slight increase in density. That may be meaningful to you. You may be one of those people who is motivated enough to continue to apply this twice a day, every day. You may wonder, well, after a certain point, can you use it less frequently throughout the week? Studies, at least with scalp, we don't have these kind of studies for the face, but uh, with the scalp, trying to reduce to using the medication less often throughout the week, you end up losing the hairs. So you gotta keep doing it twice a day, every day. That's a lot to keep up with. And again, as I said, it can be irritating. Now, the higher percentages, like 5%, are more likely to be irritating. In these studies, they're using one to 3%. Another side effect with topical minoxidil, which you know is what you want in certain areas, but not in others, and that is hypertrichosis, increased hair growth. So you need to be very careful with applying it to the brows so that you don't get it. You know, a lot of times women, who are using minoxidil on their scalp, if it trickles down on their forehead, forehead, they'll get some hair growth there that they're not so pleased with. I really would like to have more studies on using minoxidil to these areas because the truthfully, the follicles in these areas, they are different from the follicles on your head. And then the other issue that you need to bear in mind is that with minoxidil, not everyone's hair follicles respond to the drug. And one reason for that is because minoxidil itself is not the active form of the drug. It has to be converted by enzymes in your follicle called sulfotransferases that convert it to its active form. Some people's enzymes are more active, if you will, than others. Some people's sulfotransferase activity is just not optimal, so you may not get great results with with minoxidil to the face. But regardless, it is not like a cure or anything. It's really only, only as useful as you continue to use it. As soon as you stop, you're gonna experience shedding and you'll go back to the way the hair would have been had you never used minoxidil. One thing I know a lot of people try that I don't really recommend people do is to combine microneedling with minoxidil. We're talking about for the scalp. Microneedling is, there is a study showing that uh, microneedling can help enhance the efficacy of minoxidil. But the, as you guys know from my videos on microneedling, the, over, the, the microneedling tools that you can do at home, they're, they have limitations. They're not the same caliber and quality as what is used in office and you do run the risk of infections, bleeding and scarring. And the studies that we do have showing that microneedling enhances the efficacy of minoxidil, they themselves are limited. 
So when we're talking about the beard area or the brow area, I would say proceed with caution because here, even more likely to have issues of infection scarring. And we really don't have the data showing that microneedling plus minoxidil is more effective for beard or brow area. I mean, we're talking about very limited research to begin with. So in summary, yes, there is evidence that using minoxidil can improve your brow thickness and brow density, as well as beard thickness and beard growth. However, it is not like a cure for those things and you have to continue using it twice daily in order to maintain the results. And as soon as you stop, your brows or beard will go back to how they would have been had you never used it in the first place. I'm gonna wrap this video up here, you guys, but let me know in the comments, have you tried this for your brows or your beard area? If so, what was your experience? Did you get a lot of irritation or did you have satisfactory results? I would love to know. Thank you Function of Beauty for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out, links in the description box. And on the end slate, I'm going to put my video about oral minoxidil pills for hair loss. So that is definitely a very, very promising treatment for pattern hair loss. So check that out if you are interested, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.